Hello and welcome to Buses Podcast. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and follow my Instagram and Facebook pages to find out who my next guest will be and when my next podcast goes live. Thank you. Take six. Hello and welcome back to Buses Podcast. Today I'm joined by Team GB boxer Jen Richardson, five time national champion, four European, uh, one world. Yeah, yeah. well done. Nice. <laughs> How are you today? You alright? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm just today we're talking through your boxing career. Yeah. But firstly, you're my first female guest. Woo! Feel good. <laughs> was that gay? <laughs> yeah, was probably. Gay? <laughs> so, how was growing up for you and how did you get into boxing? So, my dad's always wanted like my brother to do some sort of self defence and fitness. So, when my brother was 10 years old, my dad took him to kickboxing classes because my dad grew up in gyms and doing kickboxing himself but he never had the dedication to fully go on into the sport. So then, so at 10 years old, obviously he went to kickboxing every night and was doing that. And obviously I was six years old at the time. So if my mum was at work, I had to go with them because obviously my dad was there watching. So I couldn't be left alone. So I went with them and I was watching. And then like at the back of the class, I'd start joining and like watching what I was doing and like practicing it with my dad. So the instructor came up and was like, you can just join the class, like class, even though obviously I was six years old. So like every night we went there and we was doing kickboxing, and we got our yellow belt. But my brother, he just wasn't good at it. So like we'd have to have that like chair, to hold our legs up, and he just kickboxing. It wasn't, it wasn't a sport for James or me. But I loved it. So like my dad was like, listen, it's embarrassing. Like you can't keep doing this sport. Like we're gonna have to transition into boxing. So you don't have to do anything because it was just a kick kicking he couldn't get the grasp of kicking yeah. so then my dad took him to a like a local boxing gym and the owner was like you can coach him yourself because my dad like knew what he was doing so then instead of going to like parks and that I'd go there every day and just watch my brother and watch everyone else in the class and then he became the coach for the actual whole boxing gym so from six years old I've literally just been in, been in the gym every single night like come home from school go to the boxing gym, watch my brother train, watch all the other lads train. And I was basically just that like annoying little kid, like running around, getting in everyone's way, they'd be working out and I'd just be like in and out, like just annoying everyone. But like along that way, I also picked up stuff like with the kickboxing, I always picked up stuff what they was doing. Cause naturally just being in there every night, you're gonna obviously learn. Yeah. So then obviously my dad always wanted me to do something as well. So at eight years old, he was like, right, like, less of the messing around now, let's get you into the actual classes and let's get you doing it yourself. So from eight years old, I started training properly with my brother as well. So, and then also at weekends, I was always going like, so he'd train every night, so like Monday to Friday, he'd be training. And then like Saturdays and Sundays, I'd have like fights. So I'd be traveling the country with my family and watching him in fights and watching like, him win, lose, whatever. And I've always been like, oh, I've always wanted to do that. So this was like at 10 years old now, I was, I sat down with my dad and I was like, I'm, I'm old enough to fight. I really want to give it a go. I want to be like James. I want to do everything that he does. And my dad sat me down and I was like, listen, like, it's not just going to be the training now that you're doing. It's going to get a lot harder if you want to fight. And I was like, I'm not bothered. Like, I'm willing to prepare. Like I'm willing to do it, give up everything to do that, just to be like him. And because the feeling he got when he won, like, I remember like, everybody was just buzzing and that and I was like I want that feeling like I want everyone to be buzzing about me and I want to be like him so from 10 years old it just got really intense like I want like after school like when everyone used to go to like the mate's house or like go to the park I used to go straight home straight to the boxing gym like there was no I basically gave up my childhood for boxing at like an early age like even from six years old obviously I was always in the gym every night but as I got older and people started like going out and stuff I just had to like miss everything so I was like missing like trick-or-treating at Halloween and like just birthday parties my own birthdays just to be in the gym to train to fight like my brother which I would never never regretted or like hated at the did time you, did you understand it though at, at 10 ish years old did you even understand that it was you was giving stuff up for it no not was at that it just normal? no it was just normal for yeah. me because like that's all I've known since six years old. All I've known is being in the boxing gym. I never knew like going to your mate's house or going to the park. I remember one occasion where I went 
so I went to the park after school, but I had to be in by five o'clock to get ready to go to the gym. Yeah. And I remember like having so much fun at the park and like my dad ringing me and it was like half five and he was like, where are you? Yeah. He was like, get home now. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And I was like, can I just have the night off? And he was like, no, like get home now. And I remember like going home like nearly in tears, like, yeah. But like that was the only occasion but even after that like it never bothered me like that was the only time i went and like i didn't care like growing up i've never it's never bothered me to an extent like some occasions it does like when i got older in secondary school but like at 10 years old obviously i started fighting so i had my first skills about i traveled to wales for it so it was like a wales first like england clubs kind of thing and i did really well in that so then i started actually actually competing so at like 11 years old, I was like able to have a fight. So skills about is where both boxers win. So like yeah. you get in there for like one minute, like three minutes. So three rounds for one minute each round. And like at that time, it was like the first round was just jabs. So all I could use my lead hand. The second round was one twos. And then the third round was anything. But at the end of that, no matter who's beat who or yeah. whatever it was, you both get your hand raised. Cause it's just like a feeling of fights. Yeah. So at 11 years old, I was ready to have a proper fight, win or lose. So I had four fights and I was undefeated, won them all unanimous. And then obviously at that point, I'm a girl, I'm undefeated, four fights, I'm only 11 years old, so fights slow down. There wasn't many girls in the sport at that time. At, like, It was still a, a point in boxing where should girls really box? It was that kind of thing where a lot of people didn't agree with girls boxing. Mm. A lot of girls thought it was like too manly sport to box. So there weren't many girls out there. So after four fights, there was no girls for me to fight. Like no matter what my dad did or tried to get girls, nobody would fight me. Because obviously you've got to be the same level, mm. same age, same weight. So at that point there was just none. So I went like a year and a half about fighting at all. So at that point I was like 54 kilos when I had my fourth fight. And I had like a year out, not boxing. Like not, I was still in the gym training alongside the boys every night. And I was watching them fight every week. And at 11 years old, you don't understand. I was like, I don't get it. Like, why am I not fighting? Why am yeah. I'm training just as hard as the boys? I'm missing out on everything that I could be doing. And I'm not getting anything. I'm literally just in the gym for the sake of being in the gym. And my dad always like, just stick with it, stick with it. But I didn't understand at that, that age. Did you want to stop? No, I never wanted to stop. But the problem was I started eating and I just kept eating. I, there was no point. I, I was training for the sake of it. So I wasn't training like my hardest. Cause I knew I was, I was not going to get a fight mm. and I was just eating what I want I wasn't watching what I, at 11 years old you don't really watch what you eat so I was just eating for the sake of it and like obviously the boys were, had all this like was winning every week so I put on so much weight so in a year and a half I went from 54 kilos to 72 kilos 72 <laughs> that's mad isn't it yeah so at that point a year and a half later I was I was coming up to I dad was like right oh I did that bit wrong so was, Right, we'll just cut that, yeah? Yeah. So, like, a year and a half later, whatever, there was championships coming up. So at this point, I think I was like 13, and then I was like, right, you've got a championship. Coming up. And I've watched my brother go in championships every year, but I've never understand what championships were. I didn't understand, I didn't really, I knew it was like a big fight, I knew it was a big tournament, mm. but I didn't, at that age, I didn't understand what it meant. But I was like, oh my God, championships, like, this is a big thing, like, it was a big deal to be the best in England. So it was like, at that point I was 70, like, well I was like 69 kilos, but there was no weight class for that. So there was a girl in the 72 kilo weight class. So then I was like, I'm gonna risk it, and I'm gonna put you in that weight class just to get you a fight. Mm. So my first national, it was in Sheffield, where I chain now it, with GB. But so at 13 years old, we went there at 72 kilos, but I wasn't weighing actually 72 kilos, I was like 69, but I had to eat up. So I remember the morning of the fight traveling there, I ate my breakfast. I, Dad gave me about three bottles of water and he's like, down all them. Because obviously I'd get, I had to put weight on to weigh in to even make weight for the fight. He also got me a Mackey's that day. And I have never, ever refused a Mackey's. But he was forcing this Mackey's down me. I've already ate breakfast and all that. He was forcing this Mackey's down my neck. Three bottles of water. I couldn't, like, honestly, I couldn't fit any more food in my body. We got to Sheffield and as I was walking into the venue, I threw up all over my hands because I was that I had that much food in me, so I threw up all over my hands. And I was like, looked around, made sure no one there. Quickly, like it was like took me to the side, got my bottle of water, washed the stick off my hands, and was like, "You didn't do that. Like you won't be able to fight. Like 
mm. if you've just been sick. But I wasn't because I was ill or anything. It was just because I ate so much. So we got into the venue. I weighed in, phones in my pocket, all my kit on, big jumpers on, so I'd make weight. So I made the weight, and I boxed my first national title at 72 kilos, and I stopped the girl. So it was my first stoppage. And I think I stopped the girl in the minute of the first round. And it was a two-minute fight. Minute of the first round, they threw the towel in. And I was like the national champion. So that was my first nationals. So that obviously opened doors for me. So later on that year, I got an, I got a phone call from... How old was you then? So I was like 13. And then at the end of the year, I was turning, I was turning like... I was going on to the year after, because that was at like the end of the year. So like the next year, I got a phone call. So I was 14 years old when I got the phone call. And there was like... It was England. They was like, right, we're taking on, we're taking on. We want to, we want to assess Gemma to get on the England team. Mm-hmm. So like, I still didn't understand what like even the, what I'd won. Like I didn't understand now. Like oh, it's the best. Like everyone out of England, I was the best. I got these golden gloves and that, and like it was like a big thing. <laughs> didn't I didn't even get it. Like I was just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna fight. Like, ooh. And I got like these cool like gloves and like a trophy. And I was like, oh my god, I'm the best in England, like James. But I didn't get it. Mm. And then like England we got in contact because they got in contact with all the winners. And I was like, we want to have an assessment. So I had to do a three day assessment in Warrington to get onto the England team. So I did my first three day assessment and then I got narrowed down to like a smaller set of groups and did another three day assessment. And then I got like an email saying I've made it onto the England team, which again, I didn't really understand, I didn't even know. So there's girls there and like one of my best mates now, like she understood it, like she was like junior, like we're on the junior team. And I don't even know what the junior youth team is at that age. I was like, mm. oh, I'm in England. So then I won my next nationals and then there was the Europeans so I was finally old enough for my first Europeans. So at 15 years old I understood it now, like I understood it a bit more. I was like, right, okay, one, two nationals, I get it now. Yeah. So I got um so I had to go down for an assessment camp. So I went down for a three day assessment with England where obviously we trained like three times a day, they tested on our running ability, like circuits, our sparring, our pads, just little things that they tested on like the criteria just to see if we was good enough to go and i was fortunate enough to, fortunate enough to get picked for my first europeans which was in 2016 in turkey so at this point i was at school and obviously like i was in like secondary school i was in one of the younger years and everyone from different schools didn't know a box so it was kind of like going through what primary school again like missing out on everything but with like a load of new people i was like uh, like you box like that's weird like like I got a load of comments when I was younger as well like oh you'll never be girly until you box like if you box until you quit or oh my god like I obviously like quite broad because I've been doing weights and like oh you got such broad shoulders because you're a boxer and like just like stupid comments but like it never bothered me because I was doing well in the sport anyway and I was, like, I was enjoying it and my dad's always been like don't be a sheep. Like he's always said that he's like, don't be like anybody else. And he was like, don't show emotion. If the, if them comments upset you, don't show it to them. Like wait till you get home or anything. And then if you want to cry, or whatever, cry, which rarely mm. happened. But like you got, you got the best bit out of that anyway, though, didn't you? Yeah, one from queen, didn't I? Yeah, one from queen, which is the most girliest thing. And I've done everything I wanted to do in the sport, yeah. and I've got the achievements. So at the end of the day, the comments meant nothing. So I was coming up to my first Europeans, which is annoying as well because like you win a fight, everybody wants to be your friend, or like, everyone's there like congratulating you and like oh my god. So why was it against you then? If you if if you was winning fights, why was I still giving you shit? I just think at that age, like you don't know many fourteen year old girls that are boxing, mm. and like I was also in the school like obviously because I was quite strong. I don't think the lads like the fact like we'd have an arm wrestle and I'd probably beat them at fourteen years <laughs> old. I'd beat them at an arm wrestle, yeah. and that happened a few times. And obviously to them it don't look good. And I was from the, the school was very supportive of me, so I'd get away with a lot, like sporting wise. If you went into my school, I'd be on every there'd be a photo of me on every wall, and like they went over the board because obviously it was such a good achievement. So there'd be photos of me everywhere. I'd get mentioned in assemblies. I'd get time off school. I'd get all this, and I think the girls were like, "Why do you get that?" Like, and like I missed out on everything. So I like. I missed out on parties, like at that age people started having parties and I was like missing them because I was training and then there was like, oh like she's missing it again, like she's supposed to be our mate, like, and I get where they was coming from because it is frustrating for them, like if your mate ain't turning up to the parties and that, but I had to do it for, they didn't understand fully because they're not going to at that age. Yeah. So I was like, 
I was there just like listening to them like their stories about these parties and that and I was like oh like and it was it was hard at that time because I was a 14 15 year old girl missing out on everything that everyone's done and everyone coming to school on the Monday and speaking at the party that they went to on Saturday and all this and I'd be there like oh I was just in the gym like yeah. I've got no, nothing to say and I just have to listen but um so I was training for the Europeans my first one so it was in Turkey 2016 I went there boxed the European champion from the previous year a year above me first beat her and unanimous from Italy I then boxed Turkey in Turkey, which obviously the odds are against you anyway, yeah. but I beat her in a unanimous, and then I came up against Russia. Now at that stage of my life, everything I've heard about Russia was like, they eat bricks for breakfast, yeah. they're strong, you've got to knock out a Russia to beat them, oh my god, like, they're something like amazing. So on the morning of that fight, I was like, oh my god, I've got Russia, and I, I bottled it a bit and I'm gonna say that like, I did it, I bottled it a bit and I was nervous and I was going into that fight nervous and that's not like me. Like I've always been brought up to my dad like not worry about anything. Mm. But I'm gonna I was I was nervous and I went into that fight literally shaking. So like, the first round I lost. I lost the first round and it took me to the second round to be like, actually like she's not even that good. Yeah. So the second and third round I did good. I'm not gonna say I got robbed because I think too many people used that. I lost the fight. I lost my I came back with a European silver medal and at that point I was fourteen and oh. So I went 14 fights undefeated and lost my 15th fight. How did you do with that? Not very, not very. At that p moment, mm. most boxers lose in like a leisure centre or like a working man's club. Do you get what I mean? Like yeah. at a stupid yeah, yeah, club yeah. show. So like, for me, I'd never experienced that. And they can have like the tantrum in the ring and they can go and like they can cry. For me, I was representing my country. I had like the country's badge on me. I was there, I couldn't look bad. So I had to just take the defeat, get on the podium and I've got photos of like tears in my eye, like looking up, trying not to cry with a silver medal. Because at the time, obviously, a silver medal is a great achievement. But at that point, if you told me I wanted to take that silver medal, I didn't want to take it home with me or anything. I wanted to just leave it there. Like, to me, I didn't win a silver, I lost a gold medal. Yeah. That's the difference. That's just the difference between sport in general, you know, if you've got that mindset. Yeah. So for me, like, it knocked my confidence as well. Obviously, I've gone 14 fights and I've never won. But now I say I needed that loss then. I needed that loss to do everything I've done. Like it matters now, but after that, I literally went back to the gym and I remember that like, I was so down. I didn't come out of my bedroom for a week. I was, I didn't want to go back to school because the one fight that everyone's watched me, everyone that day, like at school, school, they put it on at school. My final, like, no one's ever watched me box before, my mates, and all the teachers like they stopped the classes. They all put the fight on, and the first fight they've heard so much things about me, and the first fight they watched, I've just lost on a unanimous yeah. as well yeah. and I'm there crying my eyes out and I'm like oh I've got to go back to school how embarrassing is that like what's everyone going to say and I did like I did get a stick for it I got a lot of stick for it yeah. like I remember going to school yeah and this lad drew a picture and he, he handed it over to me and I like, unfolded it and he drew a it was a really good photo I saw a photo somewhere and it was a boxing ring and me and my red kit crying and like they're rushing with a hand up and I was like that what is a fucking drawing <laughs> it was, I'll, I'll show you the photo after I've got it I was like I was like, wow, I was like, fair, I was like, and it was, it was like, everyone was proud of me, but like, I was always going to get stick, you are right, you are always going to stick. Were you doing it in a nice way or an horrible way? No, I just shoved it to me and I just opened it, I was like, that is too soon. And I was like, because no one understands, you know, no one understood what I put into that. Yeah. Like, they didn't see any of that time. They didn't see that, like, what I'd put into that to get there and to lose. Mm. So to them, it was a joke, like, yeah, they was proud of me and like, they've said well done to me and like, it's like, oh, like they've obviously lost football matches or anything they're like yeah oh well done like but get it, like but to me it wasn't it was like a whole that was my whole world mm. but yeah i got like drawings like that and i was like whatever and then i remember having, as i had my home show i was fighting in school for i ain't fought in school for since when i was like 11. Mm. so it was like a big thing of me returning back to the ring and it was like gonna be england v scotland so like the scottish girl at my weight was coming over to box me and i remember having a, like a breakdown in my boxing gym i was sparring and I just started crying, I was like, I'm not good enough, I can't do this. And after that, I won that on a unanimous, and I and I kept, like, it just took that, and then I realised at the end, like, it was because I was nervous, like, I needed to learn from that, and that loss, I learned so, I learned from that loss more than I've learned yeah. from any of my wins. So I went on, next Nationals, I won that, I went to the Europeans, second, second year junior, so I was fighting people a year younger than me and my age, and I managed to win that in Bulgaria. So I had four fights, one of them all unanimous, beat a German girl, a really good German girl, 
crowned European champion. But for that fact, I made sure no like no stones was left unturned. Mm. So I was in year eleven. So I had my GCSEs, I had my mock exams, I had everything, and I lit- I was getting up at five thirty in the morning, going for a run, going for sprints. I had my brother pushing me, and this is where my brother comes in. And my brother's been a big big part. So as well as him winning nationals and doing all these box fights for England, he was also there getting me up at five thirty in the morning. He missed a family holiday for like a two week holiday that was paid for to stay back with me, to take me to England camps, to take me everywhere. So I'd be in the best possible shape. So he literally got me up every day as well at 5.30 in the morning before school. So I'd get up, I'd run, I'd go to school, I'd come at home, I'd train, I'd go back to the gym late, I'd train. So I was doing three sessions a day Mm. while being at school and having mock exams and revising for my GCSEs. And then also at that point, I was also, which again, people at school was getting annoyed at because so I'd go into school and I'd do like a mock exam and I'd go in for the rest of the day and yeah. I'd go train. And I'd also, I'd people come up to me going, oh, well, I hope you fail your GCSEs and I hope you don't win that boxing match because it's not fair, you're never here. Mm. And I was just like, like, it never bothered me. I was like, yeah, whatever, that's fine. Like, I just have to prove you wrong kind of thing. Like, I just knocked it on my head, but it was just a bit of jealousy because I was obviously, and I was, I missed a lot of school in probably the most important year. And they were fine with it. School obviously normally are fine with you leaving and not being there. But they were so like helpful. So I missed a lot of my school for that. And I obviously went and I won my Europeans. The year after that, I won the nationals again. But this time I had to move up a weight category. So I normally box at like 63 kilos. And nobody, everyone, the normal people that are my weight that I was supposed to fight that year went into different categories. So I had nobody that year, and you've got to fight to win the nationals and get the belt. So I had to move up to 69 kilos to get a fight, which was risky, and we was humming and iron. Am I, like, can I fight at 69 kilos when I'm actually a 63 kilo boxer? So we rang England up and was like, what do you think? They was like, if you think you're good enough to do it, do it. Yeah. So again, I did the same thing. I was only weighing 63 kilos, trained hard, got to the weigh-in, put phones in my pockets, weighed in, got to the weight category 69. She was a massive girl. Like compared to me, I was tiny in the ring. Like I had to box a completely different style because I'm normally an aggressive boxer. But she was too big. I couldn't go toe to toe with her for three rounds. Mm. My first free free fight and just think I'm gonna win it. So I had to go like a different style, I had to adapt. I had to go on the back foot and just pick my shots and move. And I was lucky enough to win that on a unanimous. So I went to the Europeans again that year. So this was my third, third off third Europeans, won the gold medal, the second Europeans, so obviously my second European gold medal, and like, I also had the world championships that year, so in the Europeans I had to qualify, so I had to get to the semi-finals to book my place in the world championships, which I've never been to before, mm. so I won the gold, which obviously qualified me, five, qualified me for the world championships, so then I had the worlds coming up, which I'd never been to before, it was obviously a lot different, because European, they have the European styles like Hungary normally have the same kind of style or uh, Finland have the same kind of style, Russia have the same kind of style but now I was up against like China, Australia like it was a big thing, it was a big tournament like the venue we went to and I was only like 16 years old at this point so I was like 16 going to this like big world championships like it's, yeah. it's crazy like I've just left school and I'm off to a world championship, so like a big venue and TV broadcasting it. And I've, I've, I've obviously come as one of the favourites from winning the Europeans. And I went on to also win that, so I won the world championships, which I was the first female for, I was a joint female, so there was two England girls on at the same time. And we both won the gold medal together, so it was the first females to ever win a gold medal at the World Youth Championships. So that was a big like achievement for England and a big achievement for me for winning the Worlds. Did you know that going into the fight? Yeah, so I knew like hardly any lads. Of, I think there's only one or two lads and one was from Scotland and then one was from England that's won it. And that was like years before because one of the lads that won it is a youth, so it's like 16, 17 years old. He's now a coach at GB who's like 40 odd years old. Mm-hmm. So it's like a big cap. Hardly, everyone's, hardly anybody's won it. Yeah. So it was like a massive achievement and again, I trained really hard for that. I was at college. At, I was going into college at the time. Like I was m- missing that. I was just missing out on everything to to get ready for these worlds. And obviously, it paid off. 
So then I went into my last year, my last nationals. I won them, and then I was going into my last year as last year on England. So at 18 years old, you're off England. Like you're not old enough to be on England anymore. So it's so I was going into my last year. So I was 17 years old. Obviously, I won the world championships. So I got a phone call from um, GB, which I wasn't expecting because I wasn't old enough to be on GB. But because I won the world, they wanted me to come for a camp. Um, just to see what I'm like and like slowly build me into that. So I went for a count with GB, which I didn't think was an assessment. They didn't put it across as assessment, but it turns out it was an assessment. Mm. So a few months later, I remember being on a run. I was running down Queensway, just on a free mile, and my dad phoned me, and I answered it, and I was like, "Can I call you back? Like I'm on a run, like because he was at work," and he was like, "No, I need to speak to you now." So I was like, "All right, I'm gonna carry on running." But like you can speak to me, I was like, so I knew it was important because mm. my dad would never be like, yeah, stop running to answer a phone call. Yeah. So we I answered the phone call and he was like, I've had an email from GB that you're on GB, and I was like, what? I'm not even old enough. He's like, now they want you on there. So I was the 17 year old youngest girl on GB, and I still am now. I'm the youngest on GB, and I've just been put on GB, but I'm still boxing for England. So I was like, they want you on the camps, but when England need you for the Europeans you'll get took off that and go back to England. Right. So I was on my GB camps training with them. Uh, I used to have, like, have a chat phone and everything because I wasn't even old enough to be there. So then... Um, a chat phone for team GB. <laughs> <laughs> I literally couldn't go to like Tesco on my own without this chat phone. I couldn't go to the gym. So like at GB, like there's the flats here and like, it's like a 10 minute walk and like, do you know the Sheffield Institute of Sport? That's, so basically I would not so it was like a 10 minute walk and I had this strap phone that had to come with me at 17 years old bear in mind there's like 30 year olds on GB and I'm just there this like, little 17 year old so at the time it came back to the Europeans so I went back with England to train for the Europeans so I was just I was buzzing I, obviously I've won Europeans before I've done everything before I've won my nationals I'm on GB at an age that I can't even fight for GB. So I had a lot of pressure on me, which I've always probably had because I ain't lost a fight since I was 14 and now I'm 17. So I've had like 30 odd fights and I've lost one. Do you so not I'd... feel it was better to be under pressure than feel comfortable though? Yeah, and I think I've always said like, it's good to have the pressure, but it's how you handle the pressure. Yeah. So if you bottle under the pressure, obviously you're gonna lose the fight, but you need that for the nerves. You need that, you need all that pressure to perform but I had a lot on me and I had a lot of people that was like just assuming I was going to win everything which for me I'm not that mindset I'm I've got a mindset where I could fight someone that's had like three fights lost three and I'd still think this is going to be my hardest fight le mm. next or if I don't train or if I don't do two sessions a day I feel like I'm not good enough so like even if I got a fight coming up I'd be in that mindset I need to train twice a day otherwise people are beating me people are training harder than me or if I, I, I've had so many like over the years, like breakdowns where my dad's been like, Jeremy, you need to rest or like you're injured, you need to rest. Or like my brother being like, don't worry about it. You haven't got anything coming up. But for me, like my mindset's been that like, I need to do everything I can. So like, I just didn't, never wanted to let anyone down either. Like, I, everyone assumed that I was going to win everything. And I had to remind people like it's boxing, like one punch can change competition. Like I might not win everything. I was confident. But I wasn't overly confident. I've never been like cocky where I'm like, oh yeah, this is gonna be like a walk in the park. Like that's just not being me. Like I've always had to make sure I work hard for it. So I was obviously going to my last Europeans, last Europeans for England. Uh, I was on GB, so I felt like I had to win because I've just got imagine me going on GB and then yeah. losing that like, Europeans. I had everyone back home like just assuming I was gonna win because I've won everything. So I was. Do my so I was with England every so Monday to Friday I'd be with, with my own club and then Friday to Sunday would be like in Tamworth or would be in Birmingham on a three day camp with England. So I was training for that um, Europeans with England, and that every so often I'd open my water bottle, and I couldn't open it like my, it just hurt to open. So I didn't think anything of it. So I carried on training and that weeks went on, and it'd get to a point where I'd be like spraying deodorant but I couldn't spray with my right hand, it just hurt. And I, and I didn't think anything of it. I was like, that's just weird, like, whatever. So I carried on. So I got to four weeks out. I was on a prep camp for England. 
So I knew I couldn't open water bottles. It didn't tell anyone. I couldn't spray deodorant. But every time I was hitting it, it felt fine. Mm. But so I was like, it's clearly just, I'm just, I don't know what's happening, but I'm fine. And then on that camp, four weeks out, every time I hit a pad and connected properly with my right hand, I'd get like a little pain in my finger. But I'd spar and it'd be fine. Two days later, on the England camp, last day, I was sparring. And every time I hit, there was like a sharp pain. Mm. And I literally stopped. And in my rest, I was like to my England coach, Mickey, and he's quite a tough coach. Like, he don't care what, like, he's a hard grafter. Yeah. And I'd like, Mickey, I think I broke my finger. And he was like, what do you want me to do about it? Do you want me to pull you out? Are you that bad, like, of sparring? And I was like, I've not got, I was like, nah, nah, like, I'm fine. I'll carry on. So I carried on. And then the next day, I went back to my own gym. So this was on Sunday. So Monday, I went back to my own gym. And my dad arranged sparring with a New Zealand boxer. So she came all the way. She was in London. She came to spar me. And I did I six... I was going to say she came all the way from New Zealand. Well, no, she, she boxes for New Zealand. Yeah. But she was in London at the time. And she literally got a train from London to Scunny for sparring. So I got in. And like two rounds into it, every time I caught her on backhand, I just got this pain. And it was literally an excruciating pain. And I was like, mm. oh my God. I was like, what's happening? And it got to the sixth round. And I... I had to stop. I was like, Dad, I'm in so much pain. I had to get my gut out. I couldn't move my hand. And I was like, this ain't good. So he rang Mickey up, my England coach, and he was like, listen, he was like, we're going to give her Monday to Friday without punching on that hand. And then she'll be fine by hopefully Friday to Sunday for your like England camp. So this was like three weeks out now. And he was like, listen, for peace of mind, you're on GB. He was like, you contracted to GB, so technically you're allowed there, physio. So obviously they've got the best physios in the world, best doctors in the world. I'll phone GB up, you'll go there, get it checked out, they'll give you some exercises, you'll be fine, mm. just for a peace of mind. So I was like, oh yeah, we didn't even think of that. So the next day, so on the Tuesday, I went to GB, saw the physios, there was check, checked all my hand, and I saw their faces, and I was thinking, this doesn't look good. Me and mum was just sat there, and I was like, listen, it doesn't look good. It looks like you've done some serious damage here. We're going to have to send you for an emergency MRI scan. So the next day I went for an MRI scan. By the time I got, so I went to Leeds for an MRI scan. By the time I got home, the GB doctor rang me, already had my results. And I was like, you need to come to GB like the next day straight away. So we went and it turns out I had a grade two tear in my tendon and my, like the bands that attached your thing. So I couldn't move my hand at this point. I was in that much pain. There was like, you're not going to be able to box. We don't think like in the European, just was two weeks ago. There was like, you're gonna see the doctor. So I saw like the best doctor they've got. And there was like, you're gonna need an operation on your hand. It's really bad. Um, I don't know how you can make a fist or anything, but there was like, you're still on England. So if we was on GB, we'd pull you out the competition because you've got things coming up like that are more important and we need you to cover. But technically you're still in England more than you are GB. So they're in charge. Mm. So it's up to them if they want to put you in for this competition. So there was like, the only th the good thing is that I damaged it that much, it couldn't get any worse. So like if I carried on punching, it I couldn't do any more damage to it because it was that badly done. Where if I if I could and it wasn't as bad, I'd, they'd say no altogether because they don't want to make it worse. But there was like, if you can get through the pain, you can box, but it's going to be a very hard pain. I couldn't even make a fist. I had to walk around like this. So I rang Mickey Driscoll up and he was like, my England coach, and he was like, it's up to you. Like, if you feel like you can fight, then we'll, we'll send you. But at any point you feel like you need to come out of that ring, I'll throw the towel in, we'll do whatever. I'll work together, I'll, I'll pull you out of the competition. So obviously I wasn't going to be like, no, like, I'm not doing that. This was my last Europeans. I had to, I had to get that last, I just wanted it. I needed that last medal. Yeah. I wasn't going to just come out for an injury. So I was like, I was like, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll do whatever it takes. I'm going to fight. I need to go. So I went to my next England camp, couldn't, so I couldn't use my hand, so I didn't use my hand for three weeks. So I had to train with one hand for three weeks, coming up to like a big, one of my biggest competitions coming up to date. And um, I was doing one-handed and I was, and I was just there like supporting the team, like when, when they sparred and at one point I had my hands like this, yeah, shouting like going, like just in a sparring and two heavyweights was in the ring and they came coming onto the ropes and they smacked my hand. So I just dropped on this camp and I was crying. And that was just like a little knock on my hand. Yeah. And Mickey was like, how are you going to be able to punch? Because obviously that was nothing compared to a yeah, full on yeah. punch. So I was like, I don't know, but I'll get through it. So I had my hand taped up. So then we got to the Europeans. It was in Bulgaria. Hadn't thrown a punch, hadn't done anything. Literally had my hands taped together, couldn't even make a fist. And I, it was like a week until I was fighting out there. So normally like we do like training out there. 
they had to take my hand up. So do you know like, how pros have it? Like the big like padding and that. Yeah. Obviously I'd done this with like 4.5 meter wraps on. I'd have padding that on it. I'd have 14 ounce gloves on. In the Europeans, I was fighting in 2.5 wraps, no padding, no nothing, you don't add anything. And I was fighting in 10 ounce gloves. So the chances are it's gonna hurt. I've done it in 14 ounce gloves with padding. Yeah. It's gonna be hard. So for the training out there, they tried to take my hands like a pro boxer. So it was like really padded, like as padded as you could get it. They literally spent half an hour doing it. Went on the pads, couldn't throw it, hurt straight away. Had to take all the tape off. So out there, I couldn't do it. So I only made, I only made a fist when I got in the ring. So no one knew about this either. So like only the team knew about this and like my dad and my family at home. Mm. So I had everyone watching me at this Europeans. On my rivals, I had the, my biggest rival, that German that I fought in the first Europeans that I beat. She was there and she was my big competition because she was good. I had everyone at home watching thinking she's fully trained for this and I hadn't, I hadn't trained properly at all. So my first fight I went in there, made a fist. It went in the, it went in the last round. So in the last round, every time I threw my back and I could feel it. So I came out of that fight, iced it, did everything we could, went back in my splint. So I had to hide it as well because I couldn't show obviously yeah. everyone there that I'd hurt it because if my opponent saw that I'd hurt my hand, it don't look good. So I had to hide my thing with my splint on and that. Second fight went in the second round. So every fight was getting worse. Yeah. Third fight, it went in the first round. First round. So I'd managed to win every fight, but in the semi-finals, it went in the first round and it was just in pain. So I come out the semi-finals, just won on a unanimous. Probably could have done better if I didn't have that hand. It, it was killing me. Come out, went into the changing room. Everyone obviously was celebrating because they'd been in, in, got into the final. I came out and I just burst into tears. I was like, I was in so much pain. I had my eyes and I was just crying after my semi. I had the finals throw against the German girl who was my big rival, who was very good. And I was just crying my eyes. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Like, I've never been in so much pain. And then the next day come, they was like, are you sure you want to do it? And I was like, yeah. So I got into the ring thinking, right, I'm not going to expect it. It's going to go in the first round. I've just got to put up with it. And you know, like, I don't know if you, have you watched amateur boxing? I like any boxing. Mm, but mm, definitely not. No. <laughs> so you go up to the ref, yeah, and like he'll say something. You've got to touch gloves. Yeah. So we've gone to touch gloves, and as she's touched gloves with me, she knocked my hand. So she's gone on top of my hand and caught it there, and I just felt this pain go straight away, and the bell ain't even gone yet for the first time round. So I've come back, and I've gone ready, and I've already got this pain in my hand. So I do the full fight with like, a big rival of mine with the pain in my hand. And I was like, oh my God, like, I just, in that moment, I was like, I ain't even started the fight yet and my pain's gone. But I got through it and I also won that. So I won the fourth, my fourth? Yeah. Fourth European? No, third. Third yeah. European title. Fighting third European title with one hand, basically, and a really bad injury. So after that, obviously I celebrated everyone. I've got, a, I've had to have five months. So I'm now, I've left England. So I've done everything I can for England. I've won my last fight my Europeans, I got them another medal, representing my country, done everything I could for them. So now I'm fully on GB. So I've had to have five months off because of my hand. So I've literally just been doing one-handed stuff, nothing like major. And then um, I was getting ready for my nationals. So this was like different nationals though, because I was 18 years old, so I was a senior. So I could fight up to people of 40 years old. So I was getting, so this is like a big nationals for me. This is like the one that means everything, like the senior nationals. I won all the ones before, I was like an under 18, under 16. But this was like my senior ones. I'd been put in as seed number one for GB because they can put seeds in. So I was like seeded number one to like the, the one that's going to win it, technically, like who should win it. Yeah. And then obviously COVID hit. So I've had to have like a year out. We have like not, so I'd never got that senior, my first senior bout which should have been in an England competition. So I've come back from COVID. Now I'm on GB, obviously I used to box at 64 kilos. That's not an Olympic weight category. So I've had to drop a weight category to get onto GB. So now I knew now I knew I won't box for England anymore because I got away with it because I boxed for England at 64. Yeah. I've not got that anymore. So I had to drop weight category. So I have, I've had to come down four kilos to fight at 60 kilos. So I had to lose weight. I'm obviously given a lot of age away. So my first competition was in a big competition in Hungary. So my first senior fight, normally obviously first senior fights are in like leisure centre and stuff like that. Yeah. Mine was representing Great Britain. 
debut, never had these coaches in my corner before. Yeah, I've worked with them, I've been on camps with them. Mm. I'm used to like England coaches and my dad. So I've gone to Hungary, first senior, with the Olympic team, which is just me and the Olympic team. So I've got the likes of like Fraser Clark there, Lauren Price there, who's just got an Olympic gold medal. And I'm there, 18 years old, um, fighting with these coaches I've never had, a weight class that I've never been before. I've never ever mm. been that weight class. So first fight I won, my second fight I won unanimous, both unanimous, and then I came up against the 2016 um, Olympic bronze medalist, who's had 360 bouts. I've only had like 40 at this point. Um, she's boxed Katie Taylor twice. She's boxed all the big names you can imagine in women's boxing. She's 41 years old, so she's literally like the same age as my mum. And I've had to fight her and she's only lost like a handful of fights so she hadn't lost like she had 300 fights but she's only lost like 20 fights mm. so she's like the big name and she was i was really obviously really nervous and i lost to her and i lo and i but i gave her a good fight so i i just performed well so my first senior tournament first time that weight first time with the gb and i've lost to the olympic bronze medalist but again like my first loss i lost i learned so much and i was gutted but i didn't look at i didn't go back to how i was where i was like heartbroken like I just took the lessons that I learned and I was happy. I was I came out of that fight probably more happy than I had every other Europeans I won just because who she was, like yeah. the pedigree of boxing was so different then. Now it's about levels. It's not about like your record. Yeah, I've got another another loss on my record, but the person I boxed there You feel like you've got more fun yeah, than I've what got, it shows like, on paper. Not yeah. many people can say they've been in a ring with like like that woman. Yeah, definitely. And so I come back there, I learned a lot from it. And I always said like, I'll I'll learn from my mistakes. And then not long ago, seven weeks ago, got picked for the European Championships again, but under 22s this time. So obviously I won the under 18s. This was the under 22. So I was going in again, like one of the youngest. GB, big tournament. I've won every European you can, but this one's obviously a, a level up now because you're a senior. So everything like there's woman's strength, there's obviously experience she had 300 bouts compared to that woman so, when it, so this was at italy and i went there and i had four fights and i won that so i managed to win like a big title like that at a young age so now so now yeah I'm i was making weight for you because i don't think you're as much yeah like, so good at it was you no basically you? well basically i've always boxed it Obviously, I, when I was a kid, I was quite fat, 72 kilos. So when I got in England, there was like, we want you in England, but you've got to drop 72 kilos to 63. Mm. So that was like a lot of weight for me. So like, yeah. at that age, I was going to like school. And at break time, everyone would be having like these pizza bagels and toast and like everything. And I'd be there with like five carrot sticks and just like, at dinner, like all the dinner stuff used to come up to me and be like, your dinners just get weirder and weirder every day. So they'd be eating like, all like the other kids in like 15, 16, 14, would be eating like, like the fish and the chips and the sausages and the pizza. And I'd literally come with like lettuce, ham or chicken and lettuce and add that as a sandwich. So I didn't have bread with it or anything cause I'd just have like proper healthy meals. And I struggled with it so much, like watching everyone like, or like go into my mate's house and they'd have pizza and I'd have to watch them eat pizza. Yeah. Well, I have like a bit of chicken and veg, so I've always had to make weight. But when I got to 63 kilos, I held it quite comfortable. So I, I got to a point where I made 64 and 63 really easy. Mm. So going from having like three or four years at 64 kilos to having to drop like four kilos to get under 60, I did find it hard. Like, and I'm lucky where I've got my brother, and he does everything for me when it comes to diet. Like, he'll guide me. Like, he'll be like tell me what to eat like if i'm at, like even seven weeks ago when i was at a competition i was literally sending photos of my meal going is this all right is this all right obviously i've got to cut my calories i've got to do everything just to make sure i'm doing it right but it's like a proper routine it's like if i don't get like if i don't eat my meals in the exact same time of day yeah. or i've got to get like the the enough amount of hours of sleep a night it's just like a lifestyle like everything revolves around your eating your training just to make that weight so it is really hard and like after a fight, I probably do eat a bit too much and then have to do it all again and I regret it every time. I was travelling for you because obviously you go around the world, going to different places, amazing places that people would love to go to, but do you actually get to enjoy them? 
yeah so i've obviously i've been to so many countries and i put on my story like even training camps like i go to i've been to america twice in like the space of like a year and a half and i've gone to countries that people wish they could go to and i do and i put the best bits on like instagram and like social media and like oh yeah like this is really great and people are like even like training with like Anthony Joshua, so like, I train like in the same place he does, and I've got photos of him and stuff like that. And people say, "Oh, you're so lucky." Oh, I wish I was you. I wish I could do that instead of working like my nine to five job. But the truth is, like, I don't see any of it. Like, yeah, I put like nice photos on, but normally if I'm like in America, I'm from the a complex, like the hotel, straight to the gym, straight back. There's no time to go sightseeing. There's no time to do anything that like people it's like going on holiday like they're like oh you've been to Italy you're gonna come back with a really nice tan mm. no because I stay out of the sun because that's gonna drain me from my fight yeah. like I'm not going there for a holiday I'm going there for a job yeah. and I think people get confused because I do put the nice I'm not gonna put like the crap bits on Instagram or anything but a lot of people think I'm off for like and I'm like traveling the world but I don't get to see any of like I've been to America as well I've been to LA have I seen any of it no I've seen the boxing gym and I've seen my hotel room yeah. and the same with Italy it was 32 degrees there did I get a tan no because I was in the shade 24 7 if I want fighting yeah. and like AJ like I've worked so hard to get there and I think people forget what I've done like they don't yeah, know like people the give you a lot of attention for for me yeah so like if I put a photo on with him or like if I say like like good luck like because he's fighting tonight or if he puts a photo on Snapchat and we're all in the background, people come, oh my God, I'm so lucky. I wish I could be you. Yeah. Oh my God, what's it like? And I'm just like, yeah, but... Why don't you just tell me shit? See, I've been eating lettuce sandwiches. Lettuce sandwiches. Why you've been having your pizza? Yeah, and I'm like, at 5.30 in the morning when I was 13 years old, you weren't getting up. You was going to school with your cereals and yeah. I was getting up and doing a 5.30 run with my brother having a go at me because I wasn't running fast enough and stuff like that. And after school when you all go to park, I used to go to like travel two hours to like Newcastle or whatever, get my head beat, like get beat up and then come back and go to school the next day, like mm. aching with black eyes and stuff like, I haven't just got there because I'm lucky. Because yeah. if that is lucky then, I don't want to know what people, actual lucky people are like because yeah, yeah. I've worked hard to get there and I've just got good things along the way that's come from that. Yeah. Which I think people forget because they don't they don't see the hard work that goes into it because you you only ever show the good bits. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. What are you wanting to go on to achieve in the future? So, obviously, I've got the, there's the world championships coming up at the end of the end of the year, so I'd like to get picked for them a senior world championships. But now for the next couple of years, it's all about learning. Obviously, I'm still really young in in the sport now that I'm a senior. Yeah, I've won everything as a kid, but now. I've got, it's like starting over again. Yeah. So my ideal goals are in the next few years to win the Commonwealths, a world medal or a gold medal. And then the big ones, obviously, the Europeans as well. And then the big ones, the, the Olympics, 2024 Paris is, yeah. it's always been my goal. Like, obviously I've been training with the Tokyo a lot and I've helped them, like I've been their sparring partner. So all the girls and the lads that have gone out to Tokyo I've helped the girls spar, so like Karis, Caroline, Lauren, like I've been there leading up to them going there and I've seen them do it, but that was never on like my, I was always too young for that, I never wanted Tokyo, but my cycle is just starting, so Paris, fingers crossed if I'm good enough, gold medal there, and then after that either stay on for the LA Olympics or go professional and try and win some world titles in the professional. Which would you prefer to do? Will, will pro always come anywhere, do you think? Pro will look like, I, yeah. the end goal, like, I'll always turn pro, no matter what happens, if I'm not going to the Olympics, I'll always turn pro in the end, I think. But ever since I was a kid, Olympics has always been like the big thing. Since watching like 2012, like Nicola Adams and that, always, that's always been the goal. I've always wanted Olympics. Like I've always wanted Olympic gold better, but like pro will come, like I will go pro, I think eventually. It's just when yeah. the time's right. And then yeah, just probably help my dad out in the gym. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll see you smash a lot so thanks for coming on today thanks for having me thank you so much for watching for more videos like this please remember to subscribe to my youtube channel and to find out who my future guests will be please follow my instagram and my facebook pages